Hello, I'm Dr. Hassan Tawheed with another important topic today. Retrospective cohort studies versus case control studies. Welcome back. Today's topic is one of the most challenging topics that a new researcher faces. In fact, not only just new researchers, I have seen in my career, many researchers who have plenty of publications and who have done a lot of research, they do not actually understand the main difference between retrospective cohort study and case control study. And in this video, I will make sure that you understand this and this becomes very easy for you. So in order to understand these two studies, we need to understand that they both are observational studies. That means there are no interventions involved. We don't do any intervention. The scientist does not manipulate the environment. The scientist will just observe in both of these studies, whether case control study or whether retrospective cohort studies. Now, in both studies, you go into the past. If you are a scientist, you will go into the past of the subject. So let's say case control study, you have patients, you are in a hospital, you want to know what happened, what kind of risk factor they were exposed to. So you will look at their clinical records, you will look at their medical records, you will ask questions, you go into their history, you take proper clinical history, and that's how you will know what exactly happened. So you understand the risk factor after going into the past, and then you understand, okay, this happened in the past, that's why they developed this disease. This is the main concept of case control study. Now, retrospective cohort, what do you do? You go into the past, just like case control. Yes, you go into the past. And what do you do? You take the history, you ask questions, and you look at the documents, records, and you finally find out, okay, that this was the risk factor. And this risk factor is associated with the disease. Now, many would say, I'm confused. What does that mean? First of all, let me confuse you a little bit more. In case control, we have two groups cases and controls. Cases are the diseases, the patients with disease. Control groups are people with no disease or healthy patients, or they have a different disease in the same hospital. So you have two groups in case control. Now in cohort, you also have two groups, exposed group versus unexposed group. Now there is a difference a little bit. Remember in cases and controls, one group was a disease group, the other one was the non-disease group or had a different disease. But in retrospective cohort, you don't have this kind of situation. You have exposed versus unexposed group. So yes, you have two groups here again. But now what is the major difference? Remember, in case control study, let's say you are studying a rare disease, for example, and you have some patients in the hospital. Let's say you have 10 patients of this disease and let's say you have 10 healthy patients or 10 patients with a different disease. Now you go into the risk factor and you go into the past and check their records and you finally find out, okay, this is the problem. Now in retrospective cohort, we don't do something like that. We do something different. So what do we do different? We don't know the disease. We don't select the patients on the basis of disease. Remember in case control, we selected the population based on the outcome based on the disease. The sample selection was done based on the disease. We knew the disease, but here we don't know the disease in cohort. In retrospective cohort, we don't know the disease. Remember in cohort, whether retrospective or prospective, whether you go into the past or whether you are studying the other kind of cohort that is prospective, in both you don't know the disease. In prospective cohort, you know the risk factor and you have population and you follow them up in the future and the disease develops later. But in retrospective cohort, the disease has already happened. And when the scientist begins, the disease has already happened and the risk factor has already happened, but you don't know the disease. And your sample selection is not based on the outcome, is based on the characteristics that the population has similar characteristics. And the second possibility could be that your sample selection is based on risk factor, that they have similar risk factor. One group has similar risk factor, other one does not have that kind of risk factor. So the selection is based on the risk factor in cohort or 
based on the characteristic of the population. But in case control, as I said, the selection was based on the disease. So you knew the disease in case control, but in retrospective cohort, you don't know the disease. You go in the past in both. So let's say this is a case control study. In case control, you go into the past. In cohort, you go into the past. In case control, you know the disease. You know what disease you are studying. You have disease patients. You know the patients. Patients are in front of you. But here, you don't know the patients. You don't have the population. You just have the records. So you go into the past. You study the records. You now know the risk factor. And now you will find out. You will contact this population. Now you will meet them. And you will find out, OK, so they develop this kind of disease. Uh, those who had risk factor, the other group that did not have this risk factor, they did not develop that disease. So you studied their record and eventually you found out, OK, this disease was happened or they were affected with this disease. So remember, in retrospective cohort, the disease has already happened, but you don't know which disease. You know there is a population, risk affected population that is exposed and unexposed population. So you will go and check the records and then finally you will meet with them, contact them and you find out, okay, they developed this disease. But you started the project here when the disease has already happened, risk factor has already happened. In case control, you started here when you already know the disease, but risk factor has already happened. You know the disease, but you don't know the risk factor. You will go and study the risk factor here. You don't know the risk factor in the case control, but in cohort, retrospective cohort, you know the risk factor, but you don't know the disease. So just remember this. You have to watch this video multiple times to grasp this concept. I want you to be an expert when it comes to this topic. You should not be confused anymore. So remember, in case control, you know the disease, but you don't know the risk factor. But in retrospective cohort, you don't know the disease, but you know the risk factor. And if it's prospective cohort in which you're going into the future, you know the risk factor in the beginning, but you don't know the disease. So in cohort, you never know the disease. Now remember, case control study is good for rare diseases. It is good for rare diseases, but the cohort studies are actually good for common diseases, common problems. So I hope I am able to explain this really well. You understand the concept of case control versus cohort, and you also understand the concept of retrospective cohort and the case control. Now, if you have confusion, watch this video again, comment below. I'll come back and reply and respond to you. And of course, I'll make more videos on this topic so that we can learn more and go deeper into this topic. Stay tuned. Keep learning. Keep watching. We'll meet in the next video. Thank you.